Critical Blast, where pop culture gets blasted. And good evening, everybody. Wonderful shot of my uncovered ceiling there. Let me pull that back a little bit. I am RJ Carter, uh, broadcasting to you once again from the Critical Blast Caverns, uh, talking about crowdfunding and comics and all the fun stuff that goes with it, because I'm finding out there's a lot more than just writing and drawing to make a comic book, and I think I might have actually found a way to uh, get in on this game finally. So we will be talking about that in the very near future, uh, particularly if you're into uh, the CGUK kind of groups. Uh, if that pricks your ears up, wait to hear more from me. Tonight we are going to be talking uh, about crowdfunding a comic book novel as well as another graphic novel, and we have a uh, regular friend of the show, Mike Barron with us tonight. Mike, how you doing out there? Real good, RJ. Oh, so it, 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 has winter hit Colorado yet? Well, it comes and goes. Like today was in, it was 60. It's going to be 60 tomorrow. Uh, and then uh, on the oh weekend, we're going to get a little snow. It's going to get down in the 20s. Uh, but I moved here from Wisconsin to get out of the winters. And believe it or not, that was a good plan. <laughs> I would have thought Colorado would have more, but uh, no, it's low. It's it's further south than Wisconsin, and it doesn't have that uh, Great Plains curse, where the storms have all this space to gather and to strike. Most of the snow gets scraped off off the Rockies because we're right at the Front Range. Yeah. Oh yeah, you get into the Great Plains area. Um, what, what's the expression? You can watch your dog run away from home for four days. Uh, <laughs> Because it's just so flat and unobstructed, and the wind just really does come at you. Uh, so we got you got another crowd, but you are you are busy in crowdfunding, Mike. Uh, it just happened that way. You, you got projects all over the place, and one of the ones that we're looking at here is this uh, this Badger novel. Uh, now, this is not a graphic novel. This is actually the novel novel. Yeah. Uh, what what you to, to try that approach? I. Uh, well, a novel is a different animal from a comic. The comics have their great strengths. You know, the, the comic's greatest strength is it's the most forgiving medium there is. You know, you can get away with ideas in a comic that you would never take seriously in any other medium, at least until comics pave the way. But a novel is a literary experience, and you can delve much deeper into everything in a novel. You can delve much deeper into... Uh, personality, uh, background, beliefs, uh, a worldview, philosophy, action. If a writer's on top of his game, you forget that you're reading a book. And that's my goal. Uh, as I've said, countless times is to grab the reader by the throat and drag him into the narrative to the exclusion of all else. Uh, and you do that by using every skill you have. You have a an exciting protagonist, you have a great plot idea, you have a seductive narrative voice, you have one uh, uh, science fiction conceit that's crazy, uh, and all those things by themselves can carry a novel. But if they're all working together, then you have a literary experience that's hard to put down. And that's the goal of every writer, is to write something that's hard to put down. Absolutely. Now, of course, I'm familiar with uh, The Badger from having bought the comic books uh, in the 80s, when I was a wee college student. Uh, but for those who haven't, you know, for the new guys, uh, how, how would you explain the Badger to them uh, to, to show how he's unique from everybody else that's out there in the costume world? Well, he's a multiple personality, only one of whom is a costume crime fighter. Um, I started the Badger to do many things. When I approached my publisher, they said, give us a costume crime fighter. And my reaction was, why would anybody put on a costume and fight crime? They'd have to be crazy. Uh, and I was reading The Minds of Billy Milligan at the time, the first serious study of multiple personality disorder. Uh, and it just seemed to click. Uh, and it's a serious subject because all multiple personalities are the results of severe childhood trauma. But that doesn't affect the tone of the story. The Badger can be very serious and he can be very funny. And for most of his career, he's been very funny because the Badger persona himself is, is crazy. And he has a, 
he either has a great sense of humor or he stumbles into remarkable coincidences. Uh, and I also created the Badger to show martial arts in a realistic and dynamic manner uh, because the martial arts comics that I was reading at the time contain no real martial arts. They contain poses that you might see in a movie poster, but you never saw real techniques unfolding in a sequential fashion. And by techniques, I mean to go beyond a punch or kick, uh, but to show things like uh, takedowns uh, and joint locks uh, and uh, leg locks and, and different maneuvers that are exciting in and of themselves uh, and make for great comics. They make for great, uh, uh, great visuals. And, and I wondered why most comics didn't do that. And so it's been my mission to bring that kind of realism. And by that, I mean the kind of martial arts you would see in an Ip Man movie or a Bruce Lee movie, uh, where you see the whole thing unfold in real time and understand what the artist is doing. Uh, I've done it in Badger, I did it in Punisher, I did it with Bale My Eric when we did uh, the Bruce Lee comic for Malibu. Uh, and uh, it was a, a real dream job to work with Bale because he's a very experienced martial artist and he knew how to do that. But it's not just martial arts and there's a lot of it in the novel, uh, which starts with Badger's quitting ham saying, I quit. And he opens his own martial arts studio. And a lot of it has to do with him opening his martial arts studio and what that entails. Uh, but most of the story is about his uh, fight with the legendary blues artist Dalton Seabury, whom is his friend. Uh, and it's his fight against the devil. Because when Dalton was a young man, he made a deal with the devil. He went down to the crossroads at midnight and he made that deal. Uh, and he became one of the greatest blues guitarists who ever lived. Uh, and now the deal is coming due. And it uh, climaxes in a battle of the bands when Ham stages a blues festival in a field in Wisconsin. And Sunday night, the headliners are at the Dalton Seabury Band versus the Vong. Now, Vong is Vietnamese for an evil spirit. And there's a reason for that, which you'll see in the novel. It's also the name of a, a cycle gang which the devil claims is his own and also comprises a blues band. Uh, the devil creates power by appropriating the instruments of legendary musicians who have died uh, unnaturally. Uh, Jimi Hendrix Strat Stratocaster, Keith Moon's drums, Jocko Pastorius bass. Uh, and he sends the Vaughn to steal Dalton Seabury's guitar, his legendary guitar, the one he's been playing for all these years. Because that has power too. And the reason it has power is because Dalton made a deal with the devil. And without that guitar, Dalton is nothing. Uh, and Badger has to get the guitar back from the biker clubhouse in Milwaukee. And that's part of the story, but that's not the whole story. There's a lot more to it than that. There's a little romance, uh, that there's a lot of action. Uh, and uh, there's a little supernatural stuff. Oh well, yeah, I mean, if the devil's going to be involved, uh, and I've always loved that whole uh, idea, too, of making the deals with the devil, the whole Robert Johnson thing. Um, Me, too. Of course, that was, you know, the, the the whole premise behind our last anthology, The Devil You oh, Know. No, no, RJ, we're going to have to trade books again. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll give you. Speaking of trading books and bikers, uh, this is Mike Barron's biker number seven, Unfortunate Son, uh, which I have the pleasure of having here on my reading stack, my TBR. Uh, so... He knows a thing or two about bikers, obviously. I, I'm, is this the latest in the series, Mike? I just turned in number eight. Okay. But that's the latest that's out. I got my first motorcycle uh, in 1966. I've been a biker all my life. I was a biker for two seconds. <laughs> I thought they were excited, though. <laughs> as a, as a, as a, well, I've been on a bike twice, actually, in my life. The first time was a mini bike. I got on it. I said, I said, how do, how do you, you know how to use this? I'm like, I think so. You pull this back and it makes it go. They're like, yep. I pulled it back. The front tire went up. My head went onto the floor and the bike took off without me. And uh, it went. <laughs> and it went. So that was the two seconds I was on. Um, as I got older, uh, into my younger teens, my friend had one. And he had this, this big front yard that he had worn a track into. Uh, and he's like, you know, you, you, 
you want to shift it into second gear to get to go faster and then third and all that. He showed me how to shift. So I would have it in first gear the whole length of the straightaway. And to make it go faster, I would shift into second about the time I hit the curve. And I would just, <laughs> I would just kill it every time. I'm like, you know what? Automatic transmission is the thing for me. <laughs> they got them for motorcycles. Uh, the, well, that one wasn't. But um, yeah, just the harder I press down, the faster I go. That's the way I like it. Uh, Harrenberg, yes, Badger, the first comics hero, is so popular in the 80s. Uh, he's back. Um, Thank you, Harrenberger. He, he's, he, Her Heroinberg is one of our wrenches on YouTube. So he's allowed to put links in our chat for people to, to pick up on. Um, so thank, thank you. Appreciate the picking up the job there. Uh, do you have any particular uh, school of martial arts that you lean toward when, when, when Badger's fighting? Or is it well, I, I will use whatever technique draws my attention that I think is, is uh, dynamic and is unique, stuff that hasn't been done before. Uh, and if you look at Badger number nine, I think that contains probably the finest uh, martial arts sequence over four pages that's ever been done in a comic. Although there, there are a lot of great martial arts in comics. And you know the artist Jeff Johnson, himself a martial artist, has written a book called How to Draw Fight Scenes which I would recommend to any action artist. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because so often I think, you know, you just, you read the script as an artist says, it's a fight scene, somebody gets punched. And if you don't know what that looks like, other than, you know, what your Ken doll looks like against your G.I. Joe doll, then your picture is going to come up looking like you're playing with action figures. That's not what I write. I write, uh, 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 Badger steps out with his left foot preparatory to throwing a roundhouse kick with his right. Uh, roundhouse kick strikes a guy in the, in the head and the Badger immediately drops to the ground and, and uh, rotates to do a sweep with his uh, other leg. Uh, and I, I would often draw these sequences out and I'm just extemporaneous, you know, that may not make sense now because I'm just trying sure. to give you an example, but the instructions are very detailed. And uh, when I can, I'll use photo ref. We used to take the uh, photo ref from old issues of, of Black Belt or Kung Fu Illustrated and they would do uh, a technique and break it up into like six photographs. And I would send that to the artists and say, follow these, you know, so that the, so that the, the, the reader sees it happening in, in real time as it unfolds. It's not just a fist striking a face. Another thing I feel strongly about is to avoid close-ups, to hold the camera steady, and let the combatants do the moving. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's sort of, you always have to be an art director when you're writing a comic book. You bet. But now you have to sort of blend choreography into it. Right. So that's a that's a challenge, I would imagine, because well, you can see it in your head, and you've got to communicate um, in greater detail to the artist now uh, where things are going. And yeah, I, when, when I read the Badger, uh, I don't know if the movie was out at the time or not, and I don't even know if it was ever considered for a, a movie. But I always pictured um, you've seen Lethal Weapon. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, Riggs. Um, yes. If they could have got Mel Gibson in the Badger costume, I'm like, that. That would have been perfect casting for him. Yeah, we're very Badger-like. But, you know, it's not like there's a, a, a lack of, of talented young martial artists in Hollywood. There are probably uh, dozens of guys that could play the Badger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I was just talking about more of the attitude, though. I mean, Right. No, no I, that was it. I mean, everybody who saw that movie said, well, that was just like the Badger. <laughs> Exactly. Has anyone ever talked about doing that? Yeah, we talk all the time. Producers contact me all the time. I put them in touch with my publisher. He meets with them, but so far nothing has happened. Ah, well, this this year nothing's going to happen anyway. But every, everything's going to um, nothing's going to the movies. I was I got my annual email from our content providers that said, "Okay, uh, to give us your top ten uh, theater movies." For 2020, I'm like, were there 10 movies in 2020? I don't remember any. There were 10 movies, but, you know, most of them were seen on streaming services. And now Warner Brothers is going to release everything simultaneously on streaming and in theaters. And 
uh, I'm afraid the theaters are doomed uh, between the COVID and the streaming. And it's so unnecessary, but uh, time marches on and things change. Uh, I, I told you about Steve Rude doing an illustration, right? Yeah, yeah. That was off stream, though. Uh, you know, I, I haven't mentioned that. Well, the dude is doing a badger print that we're going to do at a certain level, uh, and it's going to be pretty funny. Now, it, when you say print, do you have a like a, like poster sized or mini poster? It's probably going to be half by eleven. Okay, so you know you're you're like a, like a comic book sized a comic book page size. Well, it's bigger than a comic book page. A comic book page is six and a half by eight. That's true. I was looking over here for my comic books and I moved them. Uh, they keep shrinking. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> I can I can look at the top of my long boxes and I can. We're also giving these away at a certain level. Oh, hold on. Let me give you a big screen here. That's the Badger coloring book, and it's filled with brilliant art. Some of it's been seen before, but a lot has never been seen before. Uh, a lot of Stephen Butler in here. There's a lot of Jeffrey Butler. Oh, nice. Uh, Stephen Butler did his background. Stephen's been doing uh, Badger commissions for years now, and I've been piling them up, and they're just terrific, and very few people have seen them. In fact, I was just talking to Stephen, and we're going to do another Badger uh, next year. Uh, another Badger? Um... A comic. A comic. Yeah. You're, you're going to crowdfund that? Yeah, probably. Fantastic. Heard it here first, people. I will. I will get in. I will get behind that in a heartbeat. Yeah, um, he's an amazing artist. I got a book of his that he just did with his daughter. I'd run in the other room and, and grab it, but we're here. <laughs> oh yeah, don't worry about that. Um, you you mentioned a badger. He's got multiple personality disorder. Right. And, and one of them's uh, the the hero. Uh, obviously, that's one of the what I, I forget what you call it. One of the primaries, I guess, because if it very rarely came out, you wouldn't have a comic book series called The Badger. He's got to be showing up a lot. Yeah, Badger is the personality he's most comfortable with, and the one with which he negotiates the world. It's also the personality that has this rapport with animals that none of the other personalities do. And Badger doesn't have any superpower except. For his ability to understand animals and communicate with them. Now, okay, so I've seen him use that in the comic, and I was never quite sure whether or not he can communicate with animals or he's crazy and he thinks that the animals can understand him. That's right. But uh, that that's good. No, I, I was going to ask, how many personalities does he have, or has that ever been determined? Seven. Okay. There's Emily, the little girl. Uh, there's Grover Gasnow to Paul, he's a tough inner city black. There's Max Swell, who's a, uh, a serial killer. Oh no, excuse me. Max is an architect, Max is an architect. Pierre is the serial killer. <laughs> uh, and of course there's Norbert Sykes, the core personality. Right. Uh, and then there's a dog. A dog. A dog. One of his personalities is a dog. I don't think I've ever seen a, a, a personality in fiction where it was, where it was a dog. Um, and I'm even taking into effect uh, into account uh, M Night Shyamalan's Split, where uh, you know the the super powered one was the what the Beast. Yeah, I like that movie a lot. I like Glass too. Yeah, I um I liked Split when I was watching it. And when I got to the end credit and Bruce Willis showed up, I'm like, finally, they're going to do more with uh, Unbreakable. Uh, I, I love that whole trilogy. I, I thought it was a lot of fun. The name of the dog is Leroy. Leroy the dog. So he just barks when he's Leroy. Pretty much. And do we get to see um, all of these personalities get their uh, screen time in this novel? Uh, no, but you do get to see Max. And you get to see Pierre. Now, well, we hardly ever trot Pierre out because he's just trouble. Yeah, I was going to say how how do you um, how do you deal with a personality that's a serial killer and keep it from killing 
so that the hero can, you know, say, hey, I have to turn well, my... It, it happens at the climax of the book. And, and when it happens, your head will explode what happens there. I mean, it's just perfect. Uh, but there are a lot of problems keeping Badger with his poor personality because he takes a job bouncing at a roadhouse. Uh, and uh, somebody puts uh, at the Copa on the jukebox by Barry Manilow. And uh, Badger suddenly becomes Max Swell, who loves to disco. <laughs> and of course, Max Swell's a terrible bouncer. But fortunately, his wife is there and she changes it to the blues and he changes back to Badger. Trying to click this thing here. Next, uh, Heronberg says Nexus would make an amazing television series as well. Uh, that and Whisper were the first two books that he read the most. Uh, Thank you, sir. That, yeah, that was a that was a great time in comics, actually. Um, and, and I think we're in that time kind of time again. We're just getting it through crowdfunding rather than that's through, right. That's where all the excitement is. Yeah, it's it's tons of talent being revealed. Um, now I'm I'm going to bring the screen back up here again. Let's talk about the actual. Oh, come on, I'm forgetting how to run a show, Mike. Uh, don't get old, sir. It sucks. You start forgetting stuff. So for four dollars, you get the ebook of the right. manager. That's that's a deal in and of itself because this is not a comic book or a PDF. This is a a, a full fledged novel of. I bet there's a page count up here somewhere. You, Maybe it's going to be about 350 pages. Yeah, okay. That That's a good, thick book. Um, and $4 is just, just right for that. Uh, in fact, it's it's under underpriced. I yeah. think so. Uh, and that will go anywhere in the world. Obviously, there's no shipping. 61 people have backed that. That's a good deal. Um, I'm finding a lot of people want PDFs and, and eBooks now, Mike. Um, I've always been... You know, I want my hands on it. Me too. But, but you know, we, we have a lot of people who, uh, you know, we, we talk about foreign customers who can't pay the, the shipping that it would cost. And, you know, then we have, you know, some people who show up in our chats that they're, they're working special jobs where we have a guy who works in the tundra, uh, subarctic tundra. He's like, I don't have a place to keep white boxes that I can drag along with me here. Sure. If I can read something, I got to read it on my phone or my tablet. Uh, so I'm, I'm getting more and more behind this whole ebook concept here. For well, I'm all for it. I'm just saying I like books. I was raised on books, and, and and like you, I mean, I can see your office back there. We all have hundreds and hundreds of books. Oh, yeah. I've you you can't see off to that way because that's where I have 27 long white boxes stacked up. It's it, it's like the cask of Amontillado uh, over there. You know, I can I can almost hear Fortunato behind him saying, "For the love of God, let me out!" <laughs> uh, Thirty-five bucks is the actual book, and that's not just just the that's, book. It's a that's post-paid, but it's a big book. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's like uh, my Nexus novel. Oh, that is a big book. And and that $35 you're saying, that has the postage built into it. Yeah, it does. This, oh, this Nexus novel was uh, over 400 pages. So I just find writing these characters as novels is so liberating. Well, you can really get into into them now because, you know, what you had thought balloons before, but you can still only fit so much into a panel with something like that. If you want to spend a whole chapter on what would normally be a panel in a comic book, you can now. You can right. really get detail out. The only trick is to make it interesting and entertaining. Absolutely. Um, and that, that's the trick, is to make every part of the novel entertaining. There are no flat spots. There's no point in which you're saying, what am I reading this for? <laughs> yeah. You can tell you know, he's just filling in space between the two good chapters because they got to have a page count. Right. Uh, <laughs> Because after a while, and you know this, you get a sense of what constitutes story. Yeah. And you don't put it in unless it's part of the story. So so $35, the paperback with the shipping is built into it, and it's signed. Um, and that's only to certain countries, so. Um, yeah, no more Tasmania. No. <laughs> well, the devil chew it up when it gets there? Well, I got to 
guy, a friend in Tasmania that ordered the Nexus novel and I mailed it to him three months ago. Never got it. So I had to mail him another one and now we're just keeping our fingers crossed, you know. Because Tasmania is on the exact opposite side of the earth from where I sit right now. Oh my God. <laughs> You, you can't go any you can't go any further away without coming back right the fifty five dollar level on here you get the novel and one classic badger comic now oh yeah yeah so, so explain that. Is, that is that one random classic badger comic or pretty much unless unless people uh, uh, make a request now the first uh, four badger comics that were published by capital are are very rare and and i'm I'm not uh inclined to send those out but i had a great run at first first comics uh and i think i did my best work there and those are the comics i'm going to be offering a lot of them were drawn by uh bill reinhold who's one of my favorite artists a lot of them were drawn by stephen butler uh, ron lim did a whole bunch i mean it's just brilliant stuff now this one is limited to a uh, hundred of them and 13 people have already claimed it so there's 87 of them left uh I didn't mention you got 86 backers on that uh, on the paperback itself, so a lot of interest there. Yeah, and if you guys want a certain title, uh, you know, let me know, and if I have it, I'll send it. There you go. If you've got a hole in your Badger collection, this is uh, an excellent time to get that filled and signed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I sign everything. Uh, for sixty-five dollars, you get the printed Badger novel and that coloring book you were holding up there a little bit ago. <laughs> Excellent. So if you want to, you know, you, I've got a couple of those kind of coloring books um, in my collection here. In fact, my son's got one out in the next room. He's got a rack of Archie digests. He's got like about 600 Archie digests. They're all in, in shelves. Uh, but he's got the full size Archie coloring book that they put out last year of some of the classic Dan DiCarlo poses. All of it's Christmas. And, and I keep looking at like, you know, one of these days I'm going to scan that entire thing so that I have black and white pages to play with and do some coloring on on the computer. Uh, do you do coloring? No, my wife does. My wife's really good at it. Um, she she did scan some pages and color them um, for him. Uh, she manages. I, she gets stuff done with like paint, Microsoft Paint. She's really good at that. I so, uh, Heroinberg mentions uh, the thylacine, and uh, there's. A, a badger comic devoted to the thylacine, and in fact, it's on the cover. Ah, well, that's the cover to ask for, Heroinberg. <laughs> Get that one added to your collection. Uh, also at a $65 level, uh, oh, now you get the novel and badger comic number four from Capital. This is one of the rare ones, you said. Yes, it is. It's a very rare one. It's about the dog fight. Uh, dog fight, you're talking like four legged, not biplane. Yeah, yeah. Badger has a dog. And the bad guy has a dog. And it's an intricately choreographed dog fight. <laughs> and you're, now you're only doing five of these, and right. three of them have been taken. So there's only two left of, uh, if you want to get number four Capital Comics Badger, uh, signed by Mike Barron. Um, Would you like to see the cover to that? Of course. Right. Oh, you're bringing up an image of it. Yeah. And I'm going to post it uh, on Twitter here. I got you. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up here. There it me. is. All right. I'm grabbing it. Oh, that is cool. So he's fighting the, the bad guy, and you can see the two dogs going at it in the back there. I, You know, I don't think I've ever seen a Capital Comics logo, so these badgers came out before I got into... Uh, Seeing Badger. Oh, and I'm sitting here admiring the artwork without sharing it. Because I'm <laughs> the second monitor is supposed to be a help, and it's been a distraction more often than not. 
So yeah, there's there's the cover that Mike shared with us. Um, that is a very rare comic. Boy, buck seventy five. I know. Back. That takes me way back. Yeah, that that would be a that'd be a four ninety nine comic these days, Mike. <laughs> yeah, Jeff Butler did the art. Yeah, that, that's some good stuff there. Um, so that, that's at the $65 level. $85. <sighs> Whoa. Okay. $85 level, you get the signed novel and a one-hour consult. Now, yeah, a lot of people, uh, they want to write. And uh, I have worthwhile advice. So do, do they uh, just like... I, I guess just do a FaceTime or do they send you a manuscript or they can do that. I like to talk to them directly. We would do FaceTime either Skype or zoom meeting or something. Uh, but the first question I always ask is what is your story about? And that's a very important question because when somebody asks you that you have to be prepared. And by prepared, I mean, you write something down ahead of time and be prepared to recite it. And the reason you do that is because you can marshal your words to have the maximum impact in the least space, which is what I'm always trying to do, is to communicate the maximum information with the least effort. And it's all part of show, don't tell. Uh, and that applies to prose as much as pictures. You can show in prose much more effectively than telling in prose. Yeah. Uh, and for an example, you can tell by saying, John Murphy walked down the alley and somebody shot him in the back. Or you can say John Murphy walked down the alley acutely aware of the smell of garbage, the reflection of the street lamps and the oily puddles on the ground, when suddenly a Mack truck slammed into his back, forcing him against the red brick. And as he slid to the ground, feeling granules of red brick scrape off on his cheek, a warm wetness appeared in the small of his back. And it was only then that he remembered the loud report. And that shows how he was shot in the back. Yeah, exactly. Now, I've done, uh, I've, I've done uh, panels at comic conventions where we've taken people's manuscripts and helped them rewrite things. And I've taken it the exact opposite direction. I had a young lady writing a vampire novel, and uh, she spent like three, three pages uh, explaining you know, the, the, the guy was holding her and saying, oh, you're, you're, you feel warm now. And she goes on about, well, yeah, whenever vampires, you know, uh, eat and, uh, you know, they, they get replenished with blood and their body temperature. I'm like, you could have done this in a paragraph that said, he held her tightly. You're warm, he whispered. She purred, I just ate. That's nice. Not done. <laughs> just, you know, um, and that still gets the same effect out. Oh, Wait, that's I, I I think every writer evolves his own rules. Don't you agree? Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You have to do what works for you um, and what, what you're happy with. But to get one hour with uh, somebody who's got your level of experience, uh, you know, my time's worthless. <laughs> somebody says to yeah. me, <laughs> they, get what they, bar they get what they pay for. Uh, but, but an hour with, with Mike Barron, you've got one backer on this already. So somebody is serious about getting their – Writing. Thank you, sir, whoever you are. Uh, they, they will be in touch. <laughs> uh, $100 or more, and this is what you were just talking about at the beginning of the show, is the uh, the print of the Steve Rude art. Is this the new print that he's working on right now? Yes, I wish I could show it to you, but he's working on it right now. But you, if anybody's familiar with Steve Rude's work, they know it's brilliant. I mean, he's drawn the Badger before. Yeah. And I'll be happy to show you one of those, too. You've done a, a Badger Nexus crossover before, right? We've done several. Uh, and, and in fact, Badger appears in, D, in Steve's new magnus opus, Gormando, which he's crowdfunding right now. In fact, I just spent the day signing uh, posters for it. That's a new one on me. I was not familiar with that because we are going to get over here to this little uh, item, which, which is... Funding like crazy, 1,318%. Oh, it was $777 flexible goal. I was going to say, that's got to be Mike Miller's number, and it, and it is. 
Yeah, Mike sets a low goal because then you snap it, it meets it immediately, and then the algorithm sheets you up to the top of the page. But we got a long ways to go on this one, and this is brilliant. The uh, the Nexus Lone Star Bigfoot Bill crossover is about Gormando, about how Gormando is coming to eat Earth. Well, who's Gormando? Well, years ago, dude asked, what's the ultimate Badger story? And I said, Badger versus Galactus. We can't use Galactus, so we created our own. We call him Gormando. Uh, and uh, the Monster Hunt is a 48-page story that Matthew Weldon is drawing, and he's just killing it, just killing it. Uh, and he'll be here on the 19th to talk about that. Uh, Very cool. Now, this is... Um this has always been to me a three character crossover uh, initially. I mean, it was Bigfoot Bill, Nexus, and Lone Star, but right. it's more than that because there's there's Badger. I was going to say, well, you know, Badger does make a cameo. Uh, he's not a big uh, he's not a big player, but he's in it. He's I threw him in just for fun. Uh, uh, and Badger is prominent in the Gormando book that Dude is doing. Well, why are we two, doing two different books? That's what my Nexus novel was about, was because because Dude changed all my writing. I wasn't too happy about that, but uh, we'll let the market decide for themselves because that book is getting ready to ship. I've seen the art, and it's just fantastic. In fact, I could show you some of the art, too, if you want to share yeah, some. Let's do that. All right. All right. Here's a Gormando page. Is, is that Badger laughing at your writing? Probably. Yeah, that's that's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. <laughs> All right. This is the Gormando page. And now to feed. Yeah, that's... My God, what can what can Badger do against somebody? Well, Badger can't do anything, but Nexus can do a lot. Okay. Yeah, that's Steve's got the the um, the Kirby speed lines down to a. And it, now this is one that you're. Are you already funding this one, or is this one preparing to be funded? Dude's running that whole thing, and it's funded. And uh, today I spent an hour uh, signing posters, and I happen to have one of the posters here, uh, which is the cover of the book, and I'll show you that too, because that too is Gormando. I wonder how many people are going to realize that a gourmand is a, is a gourmet, is a foodie. Yeah, he's a very... Very picky monster. <laughs> yeah, that's the cover. And that's also the poster that, that we're shipping out. Oh, man, the scale of that thing. Yeah, and that's when he's small. So when he finally approaches Earth, he's bigger than the Earth. And his density and gravity is so great that people start drifting up from the surface of the Earth and all the water rushes toward him. Yeah, he'd be too big to see. Well, not if he's far enough away. Oh, yeah. He'd have to be far away to see, You'll him, see him. You'll see him. There's some spectacular pages in the uh, Monster Hunt book when Nexus Lone Star and Bigfoot Bill uh, confront Gormando on the beach in California. They're just standing on the beach, and this thing appears filling the whole sky. So Gormando's going to be all over the place in the next several months. Yeah. The 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 the, uh, the scourge of crowdfunded comics. <laughs> we prefer to think of him as a hero and a guest star. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, let's see what's available on this one then, because uh, well, let let's finish up the Badger one. We got, right. we got four levels on the Badger here. Um, one hundred eighty-five dollars, you get the uh, a Badger poster. Um, oh, yeah, it's a sweet poster, too. I should have brought a copy in here to show you. It was designed by Jeff Butler. It's Jeff Butler art. It's just beautiful. And I'll sign that, of course. 
a signed poster that's going in a frame, people. Uh, and and that's not an eight and a half by eleven, uh, is it? Is that a no? It's a it's a eleven by twenty two, I believe, and it'll be okay. shipped flat. Yeah, that that's your that's your poster size poster there. Uh, Two hundred eighty five dollars, Badger novel and original Badger art. That is. Uh, Three people have jumped on that, and I cannot say that I blame them. Uh, There's a lot of great art there that's left. There's a couple of Jeffrey Butler pieces. There's a Stephen Butler cover. Yeah, you got some of that. You got some of that original art from the interiors of Capitol Badger. Uh, the Jeffrey Butler art that I have is from Badger Number no. Fifty. It was published by First Comics. Uh, okay. I do have one page from Badger number four. Yeah, the dogs. With the dogs. And I don't know if that's been taken or not. But the thing about that page is it includes the intricately choreographed dog fight where they're not just ripping at each other, but, but uh, Badger's dog is a trained martial artist. And you have to see it to believe it. And I think if you scroll down, you will see it. Let's see here. This is uh, that's a full page paid by Bill Reinhold. That's Stephen Butler. That's Vale Myerick. More Vale. Mike Norton. Mike these Norton. Are, these are all so cool. Joe Comstock. Joe Comstock, Jeffrey Butler, that's from Badger number 50. Hey, here we go. And that's oh, from Badger here. number four. Not only is he a martial artist, he wears the cool sunglasses. <laughs> oh, that is. <laughs> and, and yeah, that page is priceless. It, it is. I mean, you know, he's he's doing martial arts kicks, but he's not anthropomorphized. Uh, he, no. He's using the canine anatomy that he's got. Um, just... now, now, of course, you, you realize that all the younger all the younger viewers are not going to know who Spuds McKenzie is. Well, it's just not Spuds McKenzie anymore. Now he's Buddy McGill. Okay. But I, I get the reference from the from the time period. That that was awesome. Um, Three hundred dollars, you get ten signed copies. So if you're a store, um, you're getting a, a per unit deal on these things. You can mark these up, put them in your store, have ten copies, and then all of this is all gone. So there's no point looking at it and wishing. Uh, somebody got some good stuff though. I uh, got that original Reinhold art. Yeah. No heroin. Uh, no, the the badge of personality that's a dog is named Leroy, and that's not Leroy. That's another dog. When yeah. when Badger changes into Leroy, he gets down on all fours and barks. Yeah, he doesn't turn into a dog though. No, he no, just, he's actually he just thinks he's a dog. Yeah, there's no incanus corpore transmuto as the. Uh, Latin expression went with uh, the Shaggy Dog. Remember Disney's The Shaggy Dog? I do. Yeah, Dean uh, Dean Jones. Oh, I like those movies, man. I'm now on a nostalgia kick. Uh, so, so let's get Kraken here. Uh, what what is the Kraken? The Kraken is, as you know, the hideous uh, cuttlefish of yore, uh, a giant squid. Uh, and uh, Bigfoot Bill wears the Kraken as a shirt. That's right. He does. I do remember that. And the Kraken is instrumental to the story because the Kraken can open up a portal between our world and hell, which becomes important when they're trying to get rid of Gormando. Ah, okay. That, that's making a big door, but... I was going to say, who, who wants to open a door there unless you're going to push somebody else through it? <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, it's it's quite a, it's quite a feat, and they do have a problem in that Gormando is so big, uh, but they they figure it out, and and I can't tell you what they do because it's 
it's really quite clever, but it also involves uh, uh, the unknown soldier named Scout, which is Mike S. Miller's creation. So we got here some, several tiers on this one. We've got an early bird special, $199, and there's only two of them left. Uh, and for this, you get all four covers, Matt Weldon, Mike S. Miller, Elliot Fernandez, and Kelsey Shannon, uh, all well-established names. Uh, and you also get the Matt Weldon black and white virgin variant cover. You, you get you get all three covers. You get all four covers, and then you get all four covers in black and white with no logo. That's, that's what virgin means in comics. So eight books for $200. That's... Um, it's a lot for a comic, but these are outstanding comics. They're not like most comics you get in that every panel carries the story forward. The story is unforgettable and the art is superior. These are comics you're going to cherish and read over and over again. Oh, yeah. And and they're, um, I'm looking for a page count on it. Do you know how, how big the book is, Mike? 48. 48 pages. 48 so pages of story. There's going to be pinups. Sure. So so it's not some 22-page floppy with, you know, x-ray spec no, in the middle no. of it. Eight books, that's that's a that's a deal. Uh, then you got the digital book for 15 bucks. You get the digital uh, delivered upon, you know, as soon as it's done, obviously. Est estimated shipping is September 2021. So you guys got a lot of uh, work yet to do on this book. Yeah, but Matt's just blazing through it. I wish I could show you some of his original art, and I'm sure he will show you when he comes on the program in, in, a, in a week and a half. Yeah, that's a. Uh, by the way, folks, we have a uh, Christmas program coming up. Uh, if you've seen our LCS guys show, um, mark your calendar for December the nineteenth uh, at seven p.m. Central. Uh, it'll be the LCS guys uh, Christmas extravaganza. We're going to have a number of people who are just going to walk on uh, and and be guests. It'll be like a It'll be like a Dean Martin special, you know. Yeah. You never know who's going to walk in and, and say hi. Can you tell them who's coming? No, no, that's all, all right, right all now. Right. It, uh, but I, I know who's going to be there, and there's some giants. I, I'm not even well, present company included. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not even telling the LCS guys that there will be guests, Mike. Uh, all right. I'm, I'm going to yeah. run basically what you just saw that video. I'm, I'm going to stop everything, run that video, and while it's running, I'll bring in whoever popped in so that when the video disappears, there they are. Okay. Um, so it, it'll be like, oh, look, uh, my parents here. <laughs> uh, this art obviously is not in the book. This is just representation of. Right. This is just the guy's uh, art. Mike Miller's art. Um, let's see. Monster, now, this is Monster Hunt 2, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Monster Hunt One was that something you were involved with, or is that? No, no that was Doug Tanopel. Is this a continuation of that story? Uh, only in so far as it uh, involves uh, Bigfoot Bill. Okay, all right. You see, Doug's book was enormous. I mean, it was oversized. It was really big. Uh, it, Doug. It, It was a huge success. So a lot of this yeah. artwork here is just, you know, representation of the people who that's are working. That's Matt Weldon's art. Yeah, and that's uh, that's Matt's wraparound cover there. Yeah, this is gorgeous. This is where I first saw the manager was involved. He's sitting Yeah, there I, I can't wait to see that color. And the one below it is Mike S. Miller's wraparound cover. I can't wait to see both of those in color. They're just going to blow your mind. Yeah, got so much talent in one book. Um, it's just, yeah, this is a, this is a book that everybody needs to get in on. Uh, even if you just get the $15 digital graphic novel, uh, $19, which is a heck of a deal for a comic book, um, that's crowdfunded and it's this, this big, uh, Monster Hunt 2, I keep, I keep trying to, uh, <laughs> Decipher the acronym put together here. Uh, for the Monster Hunt 2, let's keep track. And this is the Matthew Weldon cover. 19 US dollars, uh, obviously plus shipping. Uh, you can get them signed by Mike S. Miller if you just click on the add-on. Uh, 
nineteen dollars for the Mike S. Miller cover. Uh, nineteen. I, this is great because they're all the same price. You just get to pick and choose, and you can kind of a la carte what you want to put together. Yeah, and I I want to say I know that's a lot for a forty eight page book, but this is an unforgettable book. It's it's you know sometimes you order a crowdfunded comic and the art is great, it's professional level, but the story just doesn't hold up. You know, it just leaves you unsatisfied. I promise you that's not going to happen with this book. Everybody who's read the script has had their mind blown. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you, Mike, I've bought several crowdfunded books of similar size for a lot more than $19. All so right. When, when, it comes to, when it comes to crowdfunding, it's a different animal. It's not, you know, yeah. you can go buy a comic for four ninety nine at my local comic shop. Yeah, but you're not getting this one. And it's a totally different experience, too, because you're part of making it happen. Uh, for $59, you get the Blacklist Digital Library. Uh, this is all of these PDFs. You get Monster Hunt 2, but then you also get Monster Hunt 1, Lone Star 1 and 2, The Meg, uh, Six Gun Samurai, Deal with the Devil, and the Magnificent 7 digital comic, uh, which was a lot of fun. I have that one in... Uh, I ordered one copy of Magnificent Seven. It came in. My wife opened it. It disappeared. I'm like, where's that book? I haven't seen that yet. Uh, I have to get a copy. I have the, the Meg, though, and I have to say that that's an outstanding comic as well, not just because Mike Miller did the art, which is superb, but J.S. Earls did the script, and he adapted it from the novel, and the novel is a really well-thought-out novel. So that comic uh, reads like a movie, like a well-written movie. Cool, cool. Yeah, I, I had to, I actually had to order a second Magnificent Seven for myself. <laughs> and, and even then, even then, I had to rescue it. And when I rescued it, the stickers and all the packaging in the back was gone. I'm like, <sighs> are there any suspects? Oh, there's yeah, there's there's one there's one suspect, <laughs> and, and she's unprosecutable. I uh, see. <laughs> uh, here's monster for for seventy five dollars. You can get all four covers. Now, let's see. What's what's different here? Uh, because the package up here, this is the early bird special. Okay, this is $200. You're getting eight covers. And it's limited to 10. And... Da, 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 da. I think what he says you're getting eight covers it means you're getting eight books, each with a different cover. Yeah. Oh, and there's... Oh, there's... Um, there's more than just the list here. This is the included items list. Uh, that's that's why I wasn't seeing before. Uh, each each metal print. These are metal prints. Signed. Oh, that's right, the metal prints. So that's that's the difference there. Because I was like, it didn't make sense that you could get four for like seventy five, but you can get eight for two hundred uh, at early bird. So this has got it's. You got to read the fine print. You're getting more than just the eight comics here. Um, you can use them as hot pads. You can slash somebody's throat open with one of them. Yeah, and two of them will be double sized, so yeah. um, you, you want to get in on that quickly there. So, so this is this is where you get all four covers, uh, seventy five bucks. Um, and these are let me let me make sure I'm getting these right now. Uh, the Matthew Mel Weldon, Mike Miller, Elliot Fernandez, Kelsey Shannon. Uh, you can get the Virgin variant and get them signed by Mike in the add-on section. Uh, Mike S. Mike S. Miller, not Mike Barron. Uh, if we can work out a way for me to sign them, I will. I was going to say, I'm sure you would. I was going to say you, you would sign them uh, if there was a way for you to do it. Uh, Ninety-nine dollars, you get the sketch card. Uh, and I'm guessing the, I'm guessing the book too. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got, we got. I gotta get on the Mike Miller about the way he writes his descriptions up here. He leaves stuff out um, that's important when we when we do this kind of thing. Uh, this one's for the troops. Okay, he's done this before with other books. I like this that you know um, you can if you don't want the book but you want to you know do something good for comics, uh, then you know for a hundred bucks he's gonna send all four covers. Uh, plus the digital PDFs. So, yeah. That's Kelsey Shannon's cover. And you can see that Bigfoot Bill is wearing the Kraken as a shirt. I hear it. 
Yeah, that's a, that. it's disturbing, isn't it? It's very disturbing, especially because the Kraken is still alive and talks. Right. He wisecracks. <laughs> it's like, you're good. He's always wisecracking. <laughs> oh, funny. Yeah. Uh, I get you. Uh, and then finally, the $200 Blacklist Universe Library. Just get everything that Mike S. Miller's got uh, yeah. in crowdfunding. 200 bucks. Uh, that takes you back to Lone Star, One Heart of the Hero. I've read the PDF of that. That's a good story. Uh, I, need to, uh, I need to publish a review on that to let people know how good that is. Uh, oh, there's stretch. some of Matt's art. Right here. His yeah, his interior art. Oh, that is, that is some nice stuff. What are we, where are we at at this point in the story here? Are we out in... We're on a planet called Hades. The Nexus is compelled to visit. Because he believes it might be the biblical hell. Ah, okay. And you're not, we can't confirm whether it is or isn't yet in this. All interview. will be revealed. And that looks like Gormando sitting there. Yep. Just, just drink it in, folks. This is, uh, oh, here, here comes uh, Lone Star into the scene. See, if we hadn't had crowdfunding, Mike, we would not have discovered talents like uh, Matt Weldon here. That's true. We'd be stuck with whatever it is we're getting now. Whatever they give us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, some of the, I, I'm not even, I, I, I was going to ask if you'd seen something, but I'm not going to bother bringing it up again. I've already wrung that rag dry, I think. Um, so this is cool. We got so we got two things we've been talking about tonight. I need to put this. I'm just going to copy it straight from here. Um, Monster Hunt Two. Let's get crack. Okay. Boom. Throw that in the chat so people can link on that. Uh, of course, the link for Badger the novel is down at the bottom in the description. Uh, people can click on that and go straight to the Kickstarter. So we've seen a Kickstarter and an Indiegogo, both of which you're involved with. Uh, and you're, you're just going to keep doing this, I'm guessing. I mean, what, what you, what's your next uh, project you got in the hopper here? You talk about I wish this. I could tell you I'm working on some exciting stuff. You know, RJ, I will... I will tell you privately, I can't announce this stuff yet because we're not that far along with it, but it's going to make your head explode with some of the top creators too. Well, that's not, I, 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 then we'll have you on to talk about it when you can talk about it, but, uh, okay. <laughs> um, and with that guys, I'm just going to close it out here. Mike, hang on. We'll talk a little bit after the show here. Uh, okay. We're offline. Thank and, you, RJ. Uh, I want to thank our thank thank you for coming on and uh, showing us both these projects. Uh, thank you, everyone in the chat, for watching through. If you're catching us on the replay, be sure to click. What's that? We're almost done. We're almost done. <laughs> and with that, we're going to give everybody back their lives. Uh, we will see you again tomorrow night. We will have Hex Allen on with us talking uh, about some of his projects. We've had him before, and it's going to be interesting to see how he's progressed.